welcome welcome back if you're returning this is a picture of my granddaughter uh, who incidentally looks exactly like my mom when she was a teenager and this is a picture of my grandson and they've both been manufactured through an ai app on my daughter's phone now i saw these pictures and of course it's it's altered the children to make them look older and fit in the era that you ask for in the photograph this is a picture of me in the late 80s um, supposedly uh, i sent a picture of myself and this is me as the queen of england and me when i was jane austen now this made me think a lot and i started to think about faux fakes and dupes and how we use them every single day i'm not talking dyeing your hair false nails false eyelashes i'm talking about decor and home decor um, we did it in the last house we made our garage into a pub um, i make delf tiles out of paper um, we have shiplath walls um, we have stone fireplaces um, you know in new builds Cotswold stone so we all do it to achieve a look that we want that normally we can't afford this is a, a big one Edwardian encrusted paper was popular obviously in the late 1800s um, this is the original in an 1800s home I tried to achieve this look in my house here and what I did was I took the historic colors and then I used this anaglypta paper to give the appearance of. Now this Lincruster is very expensive. Um, it was expensive at the time, it's very expensive now. So because when you think about home decor, it tends to be um, fashion, you so things come and go. Unless you stayed in your house and you know you're gonna keep this paper forever, you don't wanna spend a fortune. So I did this and then added the decor, so the William Morris prints especially, which is very turn of the century, um, early 1900s, even the old phone adds to the look. But we do this over and over again in our homes and there's nothing wrong with it, but it's how we've adapted to get the things that we want within our ability put it that way French have a term called trompe l'oeil it's fooling or deceiving the eye and it is when it's something is painted and you're seeing it in depth rather than a flat surface so you're fooling the eye this is something that a lot of us do and it's becoming more and more popular um, for example brick walls real brick walls and we want the same look in our homes so in my case i had peel and stick tiles um, of course it's not as good as the original but it's add, added depth and it's added warmth to the room and it's given that sense of more the style that i wanted so it's it is an older house but the, there is not a brick wall this is not an outside wall so you can achieve that faux look again um, quite cheaply without having to knock the wall down and rebuild it another really popular item is a faux fireplace now i think most people would love to have a real fireplace in their home and I want to say that probably 50% don't have an outside wall or the capacity or even the budget to build one. Well, I've done it in quite a few of my houses where I have built fire um, fireplace surrounds out of MDF. I've even built them out of cardboard. Um, just as a matter of interest, this little clock, completely faux. The ornaments are china. I've painted them to look like brass the little wood plate and the, for the clock is painted to look like marble um, everywhere you look in my room there's faux greenery the artwork is just photocopied the candles are not real um, the tv art is tv picture um, as opposed to a big piece of art all of the work on the fireplace is um, clay 
molds and then glued onto the MDF and painted. These are just tiles that I picked up, the vintage tiles that I picked up years ago. And the actual fire insert was a $10 find many, many years ago from Canadian Tire. But they are, put them all together and you've got something that looks as though it may have been in the house for many years, if not original. And it's cost a fraction of the cost. And because it is faux or unreal, um, it can go on any wall and it can move from house to house. The vintage dupes continue in the master bedroom with the DIY French Trumeau mirror. These were very popular in the 17th century. I have made a canopy style bed with curtains um, to duplicate the French tester beds. Um, again, I've got chandeliers that I've made. Half of them are not working, but they certainly look the part. I have a, my own interpretation of a rogues gallery, which again, um, along with my um, trophy wall, it's in keeping with history and the style that I want, but obviously without killing any animals and in a fraction of the cost. So let me show you some of the latest fake DIYs that I've been making. This is a little white teapot that I picked up. I think it was 50 cents. It's been sitting in my cupboard for ages. It was very dusty, so I gave it a really good clean. And then I thought I really wanted to see if I could make something that sort of looked along the lines of the blue transfer wear. So I have this lovely paper now. Um, I've cut out some shapes um, of the flowers and I'm going to stick them directly to the teapot with some uh, Mod Podge decoupage. Now because the teapot's white and because the paper the background is white this is going to work better than it would if the teapot was another colour but you can see I am literally just pasting it directly on and then I'm putting the whole covering the whole thing with a waterproof decoupage and there it is it looks so pretty in my cabinet ever since I saw it's a wonderful life and George Bailey said he wanted a big suitcase so that he could fit all the stickers when he travels around the world. I have wanted a suitcase that I could put these vintage stickers on. And here's this little one with, I picked up, um, I showed you, it was part of my storage video. I keep my linens in the kitchen, but it is such a beautiful suitcase. It started with its own little Jamaican sticker. And when I got these postcards, I thought they would look perfect as um, to give the impression of traveled stickers from different locations around the world so I've picked out the ones that I've wanted and then another part of my miniature set that I got I've also stuck them on as well so again all I've done is I've taken the Mod Podge I've given it a good coat on the back of the postcard pressed it down properly and then just gone over it with the another layer on top being careful to wipe it away from the leather because I don't want to ruin the leather and all in all it's turned out so good Now a hall tree is something obviously a lot of people have but I've wanted one for a while. I've got one in my house in France, a little one. I'm going to obviously do that up when I get there but um, I've seen it staged on Homemade Vintage. This channel is so good. This girl is an absolute genius with the vignettes. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. She's got a gorgeous home. And she does a lot of thrifting and her stuff and she's just she's an artist she really is but she has a little hall tree and in her last video she's done her um winter scapes and it just looks so it always looks so great but that's what inspired me i've got this hallway with this doorway that has been covered up i've put a mirror on it but i really wanted to give it a look of a victorian or an edwardian hall tree so 
I'm going to give it a paint and I'm going to add some hooks to it and see, well, we'll see how it goes. So as you can see from this picture, this was a doorway originally. Um, it was the doorway into the living room and the house was a duplex. And we've taken the French door that was behind it and used it between the living room and the kitchen. So we put the board back on. Um, and I put the mirror on initially when I did the hallway to help reflect the light a little bit and the, the mirror is great it's in a great spot because you can check yourself as you're going out so that's good but I did want to give it some oomph make it look more period um, to the property so I thought I've got I've been collecting hooks I have this brown paint I was going to do a whole paint effect but just decided to leave it I have been collecting hooks and I thought and I've got a little shelf and some legs and I thought if we put them all together we'll see how it turns out so I started painting the panel so not the frame and not the mirror but this is just the wood that you see around the mirror inside the frame so I've painted it all in this same brown color uh, which is the same color that's in the library in the back room I found this little shelf for a dollar thrifting it is perfect to sit as a little mantle below the mirror I'm painting it two coats of the same brown that's on the wall and it has like two little keyhole hooks in the back so two screws into the wall and then this sits on it and again it sits right below the mirror um, this is the first hook that I had which is the four on and then I've got six of the similar ones with just the two on these are proper old vintage hooks I've had these and have been collecting these for quite a while they are brass and porcelain knobs on them and like I said I have six of these and they again these are very true to the time period so I'm hoping if they're spaced correctly this should look a treat and exactly how I pictured it um, I have spaced them all I've gone across the top and down either side of the mirror so that um, obviously it gives that look of a proper old vintage wall tree I grabbed these two spindles out of my stash they were 25 cents each I got them ages ago they are just going to sit underneath the shelf they're not going to actually do anything they're just gonna they're just there for looks they're just going to give it a look, the look of being something a little bit more substantial a little bit more ornate and a little bit more vintage so I'm just going to give them two coats of the brown paint as with everything else and then I'm going to glue them hot glue them directly to the wall because uh, they're not they're not actually there they're just there to look good they don't actually serve a function and here it is my finished hall tree uh, as you can see it's very low profile the shelf is quite shallow so it's not jutting out into the hallway I've just pulled up my brass umbrella stand to sit beside it grabbed a couple of the old vintage hats and put them up on the hooks um, the little heart in the center is a little heart with a little saying on that my sister gave to me a couple of years ago and I've had it in the hallway so it's one of the first things you see when you walk in now it's pride of place right in the center so that's always there to remind me of her the little shelf is just enough to maybe put your keys down there's a little vase of flowers and then the Christmas at uh, Christmas sorry the home prayer as you walk in so it's got everything there just as you need it uh, again like I said there's just some little vintage pieces that I've put and it's all staged for um, the winter and again it's not as nice as some but it certainly served the purpose that I wanted it to
I hope you enjoyed my DIY fake objects or faux objects. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you've got around your house that you think is fake or faux, or whether you're completely and utterly authentic and everything you've got is 100% real uh, with no substitutes. Have a great week and I'll see you next time.